Hello and welcome to the Life Group Study Session on Simply Jesus. We've taken uh, six weeks to look at the series of Follow Jesus and we're now moving on to the series called Adore Jesus under Simply Jesus. And these are the four sessions that we're going to cover over the coming months. Uh, we're going to adore Jesus because he's the saviour of the world, because he's the son of God, because he's the great high priest, and because he's the perfect sacrifice. And we covered on Sunday the story found in Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 9. So you might want to pause me and together read that scripture. It's Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. So in this story, we saw how actually in Numbers 20, the chapter previously, the king of Edom wouldn't allow the Israelites passage through his land. And so they had to make a large detour. And we read how the people grew impatient on the way and they spoke against God and against Moses. In Numbers 11 through to 21, we've seen the people of God uh, rebel seven times. This is the seventh time that they rebel against Moses. Uh, if you like, seven represents perfection in the Bible. So their rebellion is perfect and they don't want to go God's way. The detour is really frustrating them and they don't want to follow God's way for them. And so they speak out against Moses and against God and they ask, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, there's no water and we detest this miserable food. Uh, food and bread, uh, we can see actually how um, Jesus um, helps us see that that is like an allegory for his word. It's a picture of his word. And so if you like, the people have not only rejected God's way, they've rejected God's word, his bread, his manna from heaven that he's provided for them. And the people of God have forgot to remember how God rescued them from slavery, how God uh, brought them through the Red Sea and has supernaturally sustained them for 39 years. And in the same way, we forget how God has rescued us from sin, uh, rescued us from that slavery, brought us through the rivers of baptism and sustained us as we followed uh, him. We forget to remember God's goodness. And so what happens in the story that you've read is that the Lord sends venomous snakes among them, fiery snakes, and they bite the people and many Israelites die. And we saw together um, really the kind of severe consequences of sin and people's rebellion against God. We looked at Spurgeon's story of a, a man being bitten by a snake and how that poison went right through him. Uh, as he uh, played and tried to swing that snake around his head. And so what happens in the story is that people come to Moses and they say, you know, please, we're sorry, please um, pray for us. And so Moses prays for them and um, God instructs Moses to put a, a snake upon a stick. And so Moses puts up a bronze snake, bronze representing judgment and the snake representing sin. And not by doing anything, but just by looking intently at this bronze serpent, the people uh, were able to live and not suffer the consequences of God's judgment against their sin. And we ask, well, what, what does this strange, unusual story have to do with you and with me um, so many years later in a very different context? Well, actually, it has everything to do with you and me um, because Jesus in John chapter 3 um, says this, verse 14, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, John three sixteen, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so, um, just as John said that to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, um, he says that to you and me. We've sinned against him. Uh, we are, if you like, the Israelites. We've rejected God's ways. We've rejected God's word. We don't want to feed upon it. We don't want to patiently follow God. 
And so a consequence of that is that we've been bitten by the serpent. Sin, if you like, has had consequences for us, especially between us and God. And so we adore Jesus because he is our saviour. Because just as the snake was lifted up, so Jesus has been lifted up. And so that by looking at to him, um, not to our own devices, by looking to our, him, he rescues us from uh, God's judgment against sin. And so we saw God became a man, spirit took on flesh, the infinite became finite, the eternal became time bound, the invisible became visible, ultimately to die. Jesus died in our place uh, for our sins. And so Jesus saves us from sin by forgiving our sins. He saves us from God's judgment by justifying us with his blood. And he saves us from death by giving us eternal life. We adore Jesus because he is our savior. And so following on from that recap, let's now put three questions for you to discuss in life groups. The first one is this. How does the idea of God's judgment against sin make you feel? The second question is this. What are the similarities and the differences between the bronze snake being lifted up by Moses and Jesus being lifted up? See what similarities you can find and what differences you can find. And then thirdly and finally, this question for you, how would you express the concept, the idea of Jesus saving us from judgment to people who don't follow Jesus? How would you express the idea of Jesus saving us from judgment to people who don't follow Jesus? Hope you enjoy discussing those and God bless. Hey!